Good morning, and welcome to this third week of Advent. Well, this past Sunday, December 11th, we lit the shepherd's candle in our church, and it's also sometimes called, or most often called, actually, the joy candle. Uh, it reminds us of the great joy the shepherds had on the night of Christ's birth. Luke 2 tells us that an angel of the Lord came to the shepherds, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel, beginning with verse 10, told them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And then the story continues that suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Well, the shepherds then went and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby just exactly as the angel had told them. And afterwards, verse 20, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Well, the shepherds were filled with great joy and they glorified and praised God for they had found the baby Jesus. They had found their savior. And they knew in those moments that salvation had come to them. They had joy because the peace the angels had spoken about was theirs. They had gone to worship Christ, but then they returned to their work. And they must have returned changed men because they returned glorifying and praising God. Now, does that mean that everything was suddenly peaceful in their shepherd world? Of course not. Oh, I'm sure a shepherd had some outwardly peaceful moments in the watches of the night. It probably got so quiet at times that a shepherd was tempted to nod off to sleep. But a shepherd's job was anything but peaceful. Sheep were always getting in trouble. And the night watch was surely a time when a shepherd had to watch for thieves and predators like wolves. And yet I believe they had great joy and peace. I believe they had inner joy and peace for their savior had come. In fact, the word translated peace carries with it a sense of wholeness or completeness or harmony and security despite what might be going on outwardly. We too can have peace for our savior Jesus brings peace with God. He's reconciled us with God. As the angel of the Lord told the shepherds, fear not, we need not fear if we trust in Christ, for we are right with God. Like the shepherds, our lives are not always easy. Like the shepherds, we face predators who seek to rob our joy and peace. Like the shepherds, we face one who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan is still attacking us today. But in Jesus, we have peace which surpasses all understanding. Our peace doesn't take us around the chaos. It takes us through the chaos. And key is the context of that phrase, peace which surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Let me read that. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, Paul seems to indicate in this passage that a life of prayer and thankfulness are key to peace, and I certainly agree with that. But please don't think it's some sort of spiritual formula. You know, plug in prayer and add a little thankfulness and you'll automatically have peace. No, we still have disagreements and disappointments and disasters. We still have doubts and fears. I know I still have them. It's part of living in a broken world. But at the same time, 
There's great peace in our relationship with God and knowing God has our trials and God has us in the midst of the trials. God is sovereign. God is in control. And even when it doesn't make sense to us, when we absolutely can't rationally understand it, God has a plan. God is with us and he'll never abandon us. I honestly don't know how to fully explain this peace which surpasses all understanding, but I have experienced it. And maybe some of you can explain it better than I can, or perhaps you could share stories of experiencing God's peace in the midst of great trials. But if you're one who's struggling in the moment to find peace, I won't pretend to have all the answers, but I would be honored to pray for you and to bring your trials to the one who does have the answers. I'd be honored to join with you in seeking God's peace. If you would like prayer, you can go to our website, stuartpresbyterian.org, and you can privately make your prayer request there. And of course, you can always call me. All of our contact information is on the website. Trials are not easy. And it's not if, but when we will face them. And so we need to pray for one another. I pray this Christmas season that you will have the shepherd's joy and peace. And if life has been a struggle lately, I pray that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And if you have a moment, would you pray for me? I need your prayers as much as you need mine. Let's pray for each other now. Lord, you know very well that life sometimes is a struggle. But we thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus to reconcile us unto you. And we praise you that now peace with you and with others is possible because you gave us the Prince of Peace. Yes, the trials are still there. And so we come today and pray especially for those who are struggling. Oh Lord, take them through the struggles and grant them your peace which surpasses all understanding. Guard their hearts and minds and grant them sustaining faith. Lord, maybe there is one listening who is thinking about walking away and giving up on you. Oh Lord, please assure them that you have not abandoned them. Lord, maybe someone listening today is so weary they don't even know how to pray. So Lord Jesus, intercede for them. Lord, we're all seeking to trust in you in the best of times and the worst of times. So we come united in prayer for each other. Give us all the gift of the joy and peace the shepherds had that night as they found the Christ child and they knew salvation had come to them. I pray even now that we might return to our work and daily lives, glorifying and praising you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I do indeed pray that you might have uh, the shepherd's joy and peace, that peace which surpasses all understanding. Have a great week. God bless you all. Goodbye.